Well, great to be with you. I'm going to be the, the last speaker for today. We're going to spend just a few minutes talking about voles. Um, this, is, this is what a vole looks like. Some people call them field mice. Um, the distinguishing characteristic of these is when you go out in your alfalfa field and you see these, these, these open holes connected by trails. Uh, that's, that's usually what we see when we're dealing with these little, these little critters. They are active all year. Um, and uh, typically we tend to notice them most in the fall and in the early spring because the, the crop's not actively growing and, and these uh, uh, rodents are able to, 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 to make themselves known. Um, during, the, during the summertime, they tend to eat the, the, the green parts of the plant you'll see here in this picture. During the wintertime, when there's no green above ground, they will focus more on the roots and crowns of the alfalfa and there they can do a lot of damage on your stand. These, these populations of this, uh, uh, of this rodent can fluctuate greatly. You'll have low years, you'll have high years, and then every once in a while, you'll have a year where things just go bananas. And uh, you'll, you'll wonder what's, what's going on. And um, <clears throat> part of the reason is, is because they're prolific reproducers. So the, the females can mature in, in about 35 to 40 days and they can start bearing fruit. Uh, the lifespan is only about a year. They rarely live more than a year. Um, one female can produce five to 10 litters in that year, each with three to six young. And typically they do most of their, their breeding in the spring. And then there's a kind of a shorter bump in, in reproduction later on in the year. Um, in terms of the damage that they cause and yield loss, there's estimates that when you have a, a moderate infestation of these, you're looking at about 11% yield loss. Uh, due to due to voles, and um, <clears throat> one interesting piece of information I found is is that they can eat their weight daily, um, and so those of you who have raised a teenager or who have been a teenager know exactly what I'm what I'm talking about there. But pretty impressive. So when we start thinking about control options, <clears throat> the 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 the, the it's important to start to, to think a little bit about why, why these voles are there. And they are attracted to dense vegetation because it, it, it provides both food and protection from uh, predators for, for them. And so if we can do things to make the uh, environment around where, we're, where, where our alfalfa is less attractive, um, it's, it's going to, to reduce the amount of problems that we have with voles. So, one thing that we can do is, is uh, pay attention to what's around the field. The, the, the field borders, the fence lines, the ditches, the canals, these are all repositories and areas where, where these uh, voles will tend to build up over time and then they'll, then they'll move into the field when, whenever they choose to, to have a real blow up in their population. So uh, controlling weeds on, on the, the outskirts of a field, um, uh, burning, mowing, anything to help reduce the vegetation is going to be a big plus. When we start looking at inside the field, um, the, we are growing and harvesting a crop, so we obviously can't keep the field mowed, otherwise we wouldn't be in business. But the, the time that we can often find ourselves in trouble is the end of the year. And so when we go into the winter time, if we have a, a um, heavy thatch of alfalfa, um, the voles can be attracted to that and they can be protected from, from the predators and they can go crazy. And by the time that the snow comes and the snow leaves, we, we suddenly have a gigantic uh, village that has sprung up and we don't know where, where it all came from. So it's important to, to make sure if you've got a field that's, that, that you suspect is going to have a problem with voles, to either graze it or mow it after the alfalfa is frozen down in the fall and it's quit growing just to have that, that, that field open and, and we'll make things better for keeping voles at bay. Another, another thing that we often think about when it comes to managing voles is, is predation. And there's a lot of predators out there, uh, particularly the barn owls and the hawks that just love to eat metal voles. And I'll be the first to admit, there's nothing more satisfying than being out in a field and seeing, seeing one of these birds fly in and grab one of those voles and its talons and take off and you feel like a little sucker's getting what's coming to him. Um, the, 
we but but and and there are ways to to encourage them there's uh, here's a picture of a of an owl box and there's different things that we can do to encourage these these predators to be around our fields unfortunately they they don't have the predators don't have the ability to to suppress a a, a blown up population so anytime you're dealing with um you know a thousand or three thousand voles per per acre um having a couple of having a couple of uh, owls out there isn't going to really put a dent in it but um they're worth uh per having around and and uh they they certainly do do some good so <clears throat> that moves us to toxic baits and this is this is the the, the key way that we manage um bulls um so there are anticoagulant baits that Nikki talked about. Uh, these are multiple feeding baits. So you've got to um, have the product out there for, a, for about five days um, to allow the, the animal to, to, to eat enough of this for it to, to kill it. Um, these, this is not labeled in alfalfa, but is labeled in areas around alfalfa. So uh, those fence lines, uh, ditches, roadsides, this this strategy can be used there which then brings us to my uh, personal favorite and the one that that we tend to use the most and that is zinc phosphide this is a single uh feeding bait so the the uh, rodent only has to eat it once and and it will die this is a restricted use pesticide so you have to have a pesticide license to to use it it comes in either a pellet or as an oat. I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you use, which one you use, I've used both and they both work great. Um, <clears throat> these are activated by a combination of water and stomach acid. And that, um, and, and so when, it's not really poisonous until something eats it and then it gasses off inside the, the, the stomach of the, of the vole and that's how the, the vole dies. You get symptoms in anywhere from 15 minutes to four hours and death anywhere from three to 48 hours later. So it's pretty quick acting. This can be either applied by hand as a spot treatment where you, where you, you go and you dribble it right on the, the tunnels or right on the burrow, um, or it can be broadcast um, if you have a, a bad infestation across an entire field. Um, <clears throat> this, is a, this is a picture of, of um, this fall on, on my own farm. Um, and you'll see that there's some, you see those little green, um, that's actually fertilizer. So that's some 1152 uh, fertilizer that we laid down this fall, but you'll see these pellets. Uh, this is the, the, the zinc phosphide uh, there at the mouth of that uh, tunnel. Um, this needs to be applied prior to two inches of regrowth. So you're, you're tip, typically targeting um, dormant alfalfa to make these applications or later on in the year. <clears throat> um, one thing that we need to be concerned about though is, is bait shyness. And so this is where a, um, where the vole will eat the bait um, and it eats enough to get sick, but then it starts feeling bad and so it's quit, so it quit, quits eating it. And then it has a bad memory associated with that smell and it will no longer eat that, that bait in the future. Um, <clears throat> and so because of this, we want to make sure that we don't treat more than twice per year with this because we want to make sure that we avoid bait shyness. And there's also some evidence that, that bait shyness can be um, taught to, baby, to, to, to the babies of the bulls. So it can be kind of a social thing where they can actually pass that on without someone actually having been um, sickened by it. Um, this, this bait can, can gas off when in contact with water. So if we apply it to wet soil in a heavy dew or a fog, or if we have precip within say 24 to 48 hours, it can actually gas off in the field and not be effective. And then as with any pesticide, um, make sure you always read and follow label directions. And, uh, that's my, my quick spiritual thought on that. So.